I remember seeing the first demonstrations of video generation tools. Then we started to see things like Kyber. Then Runway kind of changed the game. Then we saw Pika Art. And now when it comes to AI generated video, all the buzz is about hyper AI. Besides that, there are other dogs in the race that are really impressive as well. So in this video, we're gonna figure out which tool rules them all in terms of high quality AI video generation. In terms of image to video, I'll be using this image on every single test along with this text prompt, which says a man radiating power with flashes of lightning in the background. And the main thing I'm looking at is the overall quality of the video and the distortion. Specifically, I hope to see that, you know, my AI avatar can stay the same without becoming distorted or turning into a completely different character. I will also be testing just a text prompt alone. And again, I'm just trying to see how good is the overall quality and how accurately will it follow the text prompt. And the prompt I'll be using for this is this prompt right here, which says beautiful cyberpunk woman on a majestic white horse galloping across a vast dystopian landscape. So Genmo is pretty basic, which is actually something that I appreciate. You basically just drop in your own reference picture and add a prompt. There are a few basic effects and motion that you can add, but that's pretty much it. Now here I generated about 10 clips and the best one that I ended up with was this one right here. As you can see, the character has been completely distorted into a new person and it almost has like even a cartoonish kind of look to it, which is not what I was going for. Next, I did just the text prompt alone and again, did about 10 generations to see what I could come up with. And this actually captured the cyberpunk theme pretty well. I think this one turned out the best right here, but overall it was just kind of okay. I'm gonna give Genmo an overall score of five out of 10. Next, we have Leonardo AI, which to be fair, this tool was not designed for video necessarily, but it does offer that function. Now with Leonardo, you have to first come into the image generation section and upload your reference image. In fact, when Leonardo first came out, I tried using it to create an avatar of myself and these are what I got right here. By the way, if you wanna see what tool I'm using to create this AI avatar of myself, I'll have another video down in the description, which will show you all the details about that. In any case, here I'm just bringing my reference image into the tool, and these are the images that I ended up with right here. Now, I may be missing something here, but it doesn't seem like there's any good way to get an accurate reference picture into the system in order to generate the video. So after a few attempts, this is the best thing that I could come up with. The next step was to test it with just the text prompt alone. So here I put in the prompt, which gave me the initial reference image. I ended up choosing this one right here. And so the final result was this. Overall, Leonardo is a great tool with a lot of features and settings. I could probably get a pretty decent result if I wanted to take the time to tinker with it. But honestly, I prefer tools like Genmo that I can just figure out how to use it within a few seconds. What I don't like is that there's just too many steps. It's somewhat complicated. And the end result was just not very good in my opinion. And so for this particular use case, I would give Leonardo maybe like a four out of 10. Next up, we have Kyber. And when Kyber first came out, it got really popular for this sort of hallucinogenic animation style, although there wasn't really that many practical use cases for it. However, they have updated and added some new video models to the tool. So for our purposes, I'll be using this one in the middle called Motion. Kyber, it's pretty straightforward. First, I just need to drop in my reference image, then edit the prompt. In this case, there are basically two prompt inputs. So I put the regular prompt right here, then then you add the style by choosing one of these. Then here, there are a few basic settings which are pretty self-explanatory. At this point, it's going to give me a selection of my options to animate, which sadly, again, have all been changed to a completely 
different character. After choosing the picture, Kyber takes a really long time to render the clip. So after watching my grass grow and filling out my taxes, I ended up with this clip right here. Now, to be honest, this one is really cool because the lightning is actually acting like lightning and it, you know, it just looks really cool and high quality, but it doesn't really look like a god of lightning with power or anything like that. It just looks like, you know, a buff dude chilling out in a lightning storm. So it kind of lost the whole vibe, the whole look that I was going for. And obviously the character is a completely different person. It's also pretty lame that unlike many of the other tools, you don't get anything at all without the watermark unless you pay. Okay, so now I'm trying the text prompt alone. And so here it's basically just the same process and this is what I ended up with. Overall, I think Kyber definitely lacks some accuracy in terms of retaining my character and kind of just following the prompt instructions or in the case of text to video, it didn't even really capture the cyberpunk theme all that well. However, I will say that the quality on Kyber is really, really good and it does produce a pretty cool and interesting aesthetic. I'll give Kyber a six out of 10. Next up we have Runway, and the best thing about Runway is that it is very, very simple to use while still giving a good amount of customization when you're trying to you know, move the image in certain ways, lip sync and other controls. So here I'm just clicking on the Gen 2 video model, and now I just have to drag in my reference picture and paste in the prompt. So again, I did about 10 generations, and this is probably the best one that I ended up with right here. As we can see, there is a small bit of distortion towards the end of the clip, and it's almost like my muscles are getting bigger and bulgier in real time, which maybe if I was making some kind of Dragon Ball Z where I'm turning into a Super Saiyan, that might make sense. But other than that, it probably wouldn't be a good thing to have that in most videos. Overall, though, I think it followed the prompt and retained my character pretty well. And so next I did the dystopian woman prompt. And this was, of course, without a reference image. And again, did a handful of video generations. This was was the best one here, although the cyberpunk dystopian vibe is a bit questionable, um, but still pretty good overall. Personally, I do use Runway on a fairly consistent basis, and I do think it's a really great tool, and so I'll give Runway a 7 out of 10. Next up, we have Pika Art. So just like the other tools, I dragged in the reference image, put in my prompt, and made a handful of generations. And Pika Art also has a simple UI with some pretty good customization options. And in this case, this clip came out pretty good, but it had this kind of like stagnant lightning bolt. So I used the modify region tool to remove it. And this is what I ended up with right here. I'm not quite sure what's going on with my mouth right there at the end but this one definitely retained my character and also comes off like, you know, I am radiating this sort of lightning energy from my body, which was exactly the look that I was going for. Next, I did the cyberpunk text prompt and it did an okay job at this with a sort of like neon vibe, but overall this kind of just looks like some sort of video game character on a PlayStation 3 or something like that. This was the best one here and you know, obviously I could probably improve this quite a bit with a better prompt, but again, the goal is to kind of just see what these tools can do with you know minimal experience or minimal input. Now Pika Art and Runway have always been pretty close competitors, but unlike Runway, Pika Art specializes in pretty much just you know creating video, just this one thing. And overall, I think Pika is very good at what it does. So I'll give Pika Art eight out of ten. Next up, we have the new big dog in the race, which is Hyper AI. Like always, I first brought in my reference image and put in the prompt. It is a little bit annoying that I have to wait uh, for the first video to generate before I can create any more versus the other tools where I can just, you know, click the generate button as many times as I want to get a bunch of variations right away. But after the first video generates, then you can start, you know, making multiple variations. It does offer some customization options. So I played around with those a bit and tried to make the best version of the clip that I could without actually spending too much time on it. In the end, I ended up with this one right here, which seems to have a, you know, similar style to runway, 
But as of right now, Hyper only gives you a two second clip where most of the other tools will generate a four second clip. It did do a good job overall, but I can't really say that it was any better than Pika or Runway. In fact, I felt like it was a little bit lacking in comparison to those, which is of course understandable being that it's a new tool. But when it came to the text prompt alone, it did produce some pretty nice clips. It was kind of like a fantasy cyberpunk vibe or maybe even like a Dune kind of vibe. I think this one right here was the best, but in terms of the text prompt alone, I'd say that these were in fact the best clips so far. I'll give Hyper seven out of 10. Next, we have Pixverse, which is a relatively unknown tool in comparison to the others. But just like all the rest, I brought in the image and then I added my prompt, clicked create. As of right now, Pixverse doesn't have any fancy settings or editing tools. It's just a very, very simple tool with a few styles to choose from. So here I generated a handful of variations and this was the best one that I got right here. Now I was actually pretty surprised by the result here. I was not expecting this tool to be equal to some of the big dogs like Runway and Pika, but this actually retained my character quite well and definitely stayed true to the whole, you know, radiating power thing. I was actually very, very impressed with this. Now for the cyberpunk text prompt, I ended up with this clip right here. Not exactly the most impressive thing in the world, but what's interesting about Pixverse is that it also has this character feature so you can upload a character and hopefully get more consistent clips. So I tried that by uploading this cyberpunk character and ended up with these clips here. It was definitely better quality and you know clearly the same character in each clip, even though they were very different than the original character that I uploaded. But as you can see, it did pretty much completely lose the whole cyberpunk vibe altogether. Plus this feature would technically be kind of outside the scope of this test, but I figured it was worth mentioning. Overall though, Pixverse was much better than what I was expecting. And it really is almost equal to, you know, the more popular video gen tools, as long as you don't need any sort of fancy, you know, animation or editing options. And so I'll give Pixverse maybe a 6.8 out of 10. And finally, we have Leopix, which to be fair is actually a totally different category because Leopix doesn't actually generate video in the same way as the other tools. But to be honest, I probably use Leopix more than anything else on this list just because it's so fast and easy to use. In fact, this is what I use to create these clips right here. I tend to use this a lot because you know, I don't have to worry about making dozens of generations to get it right. Leopix doesn't actually manipulate the character itself. And instead it just, you know, it adds some dynamic movement by sort of separating the background from the foreground. So we can't really compare it against the other tools on this list, but if I were judging, you know, just based on sheer practicality of Leopix, I would have to give it probably like an 8.5 out of 10. I should also note that it doesn't actually generate images to animate. So you have to use, you know, your own images from mid journey, or obviously if you want to see how I created these avatars of myself, then again, you can check out the link in the description or check out the video right here.